Hello and welcome back to another video. So, something a little bit different today. I thought, well I'm not fishing, as you can see I'm sitting at home. Um, let's start off by saying I haven't been fishing. Um, I've not been for a few months. Um, for various reasons, life gets in the way, things happen, um, the heat. I mean, I don't personally like fishing in, in really hot weather, um, especially being a predator angler. A um, little bit of lure fishing here and there, but it's just the weather's just been far too hot. Uh, 35 degrees, it's just been absolutely crazy. Um, I know a lot of you guys have been out fishing. Uh, I've been sort of watching on Facebook and, uh, and other people's blogs who actually blog as well. And uh, I've not been out, like I say, fishing myself personally. But it's good to see people are still going out. I just, uh, like I say, far too much going on with work commitments, uh, with the heat, with uh, hospital appointments and all sorts. You know how things things happen. But I am going to come back with a vengeance and I am going to come back with a massive big bang um, for the rest of the year. So basically that's what this video is going to be talking about. Just uh, updating what's going on at the moment and for the rest of the year's future plans and bits and pieces and other things I want to talk about as well. So um, like I say, this is not really a, a fishing video per se. Uh, I'm not going to show any fishing. It's just going to be like a little... Uh, little update for YouTube for, for the people that watch me because I do a lot of my updating on Facebook because um, I do have a Facebook page which you, you can find in the uh, link description below. Um, don't forget to subscribe on the Facebook page because I'm always updating on now. So first thing is welcome to all the new followers um, and thanks for watching and thanks for supporting. Um, the big new, well the first big thing I want to say is I've, I've hit over a thousand subscribers. Now it's taken me about two years, two and a half, three years to get there. Now I don't consider it to be a race. It's not a race. It's not a big thing that, oh, you know, I've got this amount of subscribers. I'm just grateful if I had five or ten subscribers. Five or ten people that actually watch what I do and what I uh, what I love to do, uh, which is go fishing and filming at the same time. You know, I'm never going to be Carl and Alex. I'm never going to be Joe from Nothing But Fishing with their epic way they film their their um, their videos. But I just like doing my little thing, doing my little sort of small channel, and, and I enjoy and I enjoy going fishing. Uh, as you guys know, I've not been out much this year, just due to the fact of illness and so on and so forth. Not that I'm using, well, it is an excuse, but. Um, there's no reason why I can't get out now. The predator feet season is literally a month or two away. The pike season uh, is starting to cool down. And we'll talk a little bit more about future trips in a moment. But just going back to the 1,000 subscribers. Um, I'm on about 1,010 at the moment, 1,011. So I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to everybody that, um, that subscribed to me and enjoys the videos that I produce. Like I say, they're nothing special. They're just, uh, it's just a bit of fun, really. You know, just to show you what I do when I go fishing. Some people say that I talk too much. Some people say that I don't do enough fishing. But I like to put, and, and a few people have got what I said before. Mine is real fishing, you know. I could put a video out of me just catching loads of fish in 10 minutes um, by doing loads of sessions and, and editing it together. But that's not, and I will do those videos, but it's not kind of, I, I tend to fish session by session and show you how I get on. Um, I'm trying not to put blanks up. I don't do too many blanks re of recent years, but I try not to put the blanks up unless I think there's a reason for putting the blanks up. A couple of years ago, I done one called Lessons Learned. And you can find that. I'll stick it up in the top corner. I was fishing with my best friend and I think he caught one jack over the whole weekend. But the fish were there. They were clearly there. They were jumping. They were moving. There were signs of them. They just, for whatever reason, at that time, if you watch the video, it explains why they wasn't on the feed. And um, I try not to put blank videos up because it is boring to watch for, for the bigger picture. But what it does is it shows you the real side of fishing because not, not all fishing is easy. And especially where I live, the, the waters around this area don't team with massive fish and there's not a lot of fish life in these type of areas so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to now talk about uh, the competition so I am going to run a competition uh, for the thousand subscribers uh, just to say a little bit of a thank you um, I'm really how can I put it I'm really I'm really humbled I'm really humble so I think just like I say, it's a little bit of a thank you. I know a lot of other people and other lot of channels do it. Um, they put out these these competitions uh, as thank yous and get subscribers and whatnot. I just want to say a massive thank you. And I thought, what sort of presents can I put together? Or what sort of package can I put together? So I've been looking at bits and pieces that I'm going to put together. Um, it's not going to be massive. 
uh, it'd be nice little little bits and pieces and I'm going to send it out to one of one of you guys I've got to think of a way of come up with the competition and how, how you can have a, a chance to win so what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put out on Facebook anybody who's not subscribed get over and subscribe to, to the YouTube channel because uh, there is going to be a comp running now like I say I'm going to put a couple of prizes together probably some lures and bits and bobs but what I am going to put together I'm going to come back to these in a little while but what I'm going to put together as you can see here I'm now into my float float making and, and tackle building um, I'm going to put together um, two predator two predator gazette bungs for pike fishing so two pike bungs and two original standard perch floats and one perch float which is going to be cork now an original perch float is obviously just made from bulk, so it's a sta my standard perch float. But with the cork, it takes me a little bit more time and effort to, to make these. So I'm going to put one of these in, two standard perch floats, and then two pike gazette bungs. Now, you can see I'm holding these up plain. If you look there, they're plain. As you can see, they're plain. So I'm going to paint them up to the winner's choice. I'm going to give you guys a choice. It's, I think it's a very nice pr uh, prize, and it's also it's a very personal prize. I'm not the, the most creative. I will show you in a moment some of my others that I'm in the middle of making at the moment. Uh, they're not clear lacquered, so they're not 100% they're not finish or 100% perfect. But when they're done, hopefully they'll be really, really nice. But, yeah, I'm going to paint these up to any colour you want. Any specific design, I can do any whipping on them. Um, I'll put your name on them and all sorts. And that'll be, I think, it'll be a really nice prize. Uh, because it'll be a personal prize. But again, I'll throw in some lures and other bits and pieces. Predator tackle. Um, so you get like a little bundle. But I will make a separate video on that um, in future video. Okay. So that's those. As you can see, we'll come back to these in a minute. And I'll show you some finished ones. Now... What I really want to talk about, uh, one of the big things this week that I've noticed, and if you guys have noticed, that um, over the years I've been a fan of, of certain, you know you've got carp anglers that have certain fish that are named fish in certain venues where uh, people like, they dream of them, like um, years ago I think it was, what was the one on the pad, is it on the Yateley Complex? I can't quite remember the name of the one on the 80 complex. I'm not a carper. Um, was it? Oh, no, it wasn't. Oh, I can't remember. I, I know there's a lot of carp hangs out there that are screaming at me. Stick it in the comment section below. I can't quite remember the name of it. Um, but you've got certain fish that are named on certain venues. And it captures your imagination. I mean, the one off the top of my head was Clarissa, the Dick Walker uh, fish for, which comes so famous. It's such a famous carp. It was a British record carp. Or the... It was a, yeah, it was a British record carp at forty-four pound, and I think that ended up in London Zoo, and it was in there quite happily for quite a number of years. So there's certain fish that are named that uh, captured imagination. The anglers, not just young anglers, but also older anglers like myself, who's up, coming up to forty. Um, and it's the same with pike. Now, this particular pike, the first pike that ever captured my imagination, was a pike on the Royalty. Now, the Royalty is one of my favourite venues. And it was one of the reasons why I started fishing down there. Now, the particular said pipe down on the royalty, which was £39 plus, uh, at its biggest, was caught by Simon Webber. And this was back in the early 2000s, late 90s. And it was a beautiful looking fish. It was a chalk screen fish. Um, for, for that particular river to produce the, the pike they do even to this day they come through in crops now at that time there was the 39 and a half pounder plus loads of other 30s at the time as well as the 20s the lower 20s now what's happened is when that fish died off and a lot of them 30s died off the 20s started to come through now them 20s back then and now 30s now so it's the new generation of fish so just to reiterate the fish that come through um they they refresh themselves and you get known fish and that particular known fish was caught by quite a lot of people if you buy the um the neville ficklin uh book of mammoth pike that particular fish is in there three or four times i think it was caught by nick p uh i believe uh mr halton caught it as well i'm not entirely sure this is just off the top of my head you know you'd have to go and read that book but it's been it's been caught quite a few times but simon webber was the one who caught it at its biggest and there was a, there's some stories in that book that that go on about uh that fish and 
go on about how that fish was caught and it's just just gets your imagination and that's what got me into to fishing for pike properly um this week as you guys know you've probably seen this there was another pike that i was very very fond of that i never fished for it's crazy i never fished for it i never visited the venue i always had plans to actually go to this venue which is wakenham lakes up in scarborough it held the not the british record but it held the biggest the second biggest fish caught in Britain, which is an English fish, so it was a, the English record, which was 46 pounds. Let me just double check because it, it, it does escape me. It was caught at all different sizes 46 pounds 11 that it was caught at its biggest. And you know, it was first caught in 2010 at 39 pounds 15, um, and it was caught right up to 46 pounds 11. It was caught at 46 8, 41 12, 41 4. 46 pounds so it fluctuated um, between sort of I would say 41 and 46 pound it fluctuated when it was caught now as you can see you know rest in peace that's all I can say I mean lucky for me she wasn't caught she was she didn't die of being caught and uh, I know that the pressure that was put on this particular fish wasn't great it was it was perfect pressure it wasn't I mean it was only a seven and a half acre lake but but the, uh, the the people that looked after the lake, um, the owners and that, really looked after the fish and made sure that not many anglers fished for it and didn't put too much pressure on it. But what it was is it became a famous pike because of the size it grew and it was it being an English record. Uh, she was a very young fish. I think she died at 17. I think it says here she died at 17. And I've been following this fish, this particular pike, for... For since it when it got caught in 2010 at 39 pound 15, and I've been following it in the in the media, in the Angler's Mail and online, and social medias and stuff, and I've become quite fond fond of it. I never had plans to go and fish for it. I don't think I ever would have got on to fish for it, but I still had plans to go to the lake because I still have a number of 30s as well as big 20s there, um, and they got big rods and other species. I think it's actually a trout fishery as well. I think they have a number of lakes and there's trout lakes and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I'm really gutted that I, I, I saw that on the front cover when, when my mum picked this, this angler's mail up for me. She buys it for me every week. And when I saw it, it just my heart sunk a little bit because it's one of those fish that I've followed and it captures my imagination. I dream of catching a fish like that. Not just because of, because, because of its size, because it's a, you know, it's a record fish. I mean, just the size of it is, is immense anyway. I mean, it just literally it captures your imagination. Um... And she was, she was just such a lovely, perfect fish. Now, there's a guy called, um, oh, what's his name? I'm trying to think. His name's eluded me. John Edwards, uh, Fish Recreations. So I've been in contact with him a few times about possibly having a fish made before I got Percy that's on the windowsill, no more pike. Um, and he does like, not taxidermies, but what he does is he recreates fish. Uh, I don't know what they use, resins and stuff like that to make the to make the actual model and he does some absolutely beautiful go and check out his facebook page they're not cheap i'm not going to lie they're not cheap but they're absolutely beautiful so i've been looking at um maybe getting a couple of perch done and having them on like some sort of reed and then on a plinth so it's like a proper ornament model that can go on a shelf rather than go on the wall so i might get that done because i've always wanted to perch and and percy was very difficult to get hold of i think he come from scandinavia and he was brought over into the uk by a tackle shop and i bought it off the tackle shop so very difficult to come by in the uk um and he's one of the best people in the uk to make them but seriously go and check out his um facebook page and, and look at the work it's amazing um so what they've done with this particular pike is um i don't even think she was named i mean maybe they did name her but i i was unaware that they did and what they've done is they've sent her over to um john at, you know john at fish recreations and they're going to get a re what they've done is he's taken a mold from her and all that so they can he can make copies and and i've got to admit i don't know how much you charge but as much as i got percy on the windowsill how amazing to have one of my favorite fish that i never caught and i think if i ever did catch it i'd probably cry my eyes out if i ever did um to have that immortalized you know um to have that recreated it would be absolutely beautiful it costs an arm and a leg i'll imagine um but yeah seriously go and check it out i'm sure there'll be a little story an update of, of when they do do a recreation it'd be really nice if he actually made a recreation and then they kept it at the fishery 
maybe in their office or whatever. I just think it would be a, a fitting tribute to her, really. But anyway, that's uh, it's very sad news, and I'm sure that you guys saw it. And uh, I'm going to keep this copy. Just you know, there's certain copies of the Angler's Mail that I keep, uh, and this one I'm going to keep. Yeah, it's a bit sad. Um, so let's talk about future videos. Future videos. I will be making future videos. People keep asking me when you're out fishing, you're not fishing enough. Da, 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 da. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, like I said at the start of the video, I've been really busy so on and so forth but I have loads of things in the pipeline I'm getting things ready for autumn and winter and trust me there is going to be a lot more videos coming out and I've said it and unless something gets in the way like my health and stuff like that then there should be no reason why I can make these I'm, I'm chomping at the bit to get out I'm really uh, can't wait to get out there so first of all I've booked a trip to go to the royalty for the start of September now when I go down the Royalty, and you guys know I've got a love affinity with the Royalty, although I've not been there for about five or six years, for whatever reason, um, I missed the place, and I thought, you know what, it's, I've got to go down there, and I've got to go alone. I really wanted to do an alone trip back down there where, um, where I'm fishing alone, I can go as and when I please onto the fishery, get up late in the morning rather than like my mates going, oh, come on, we've got to go. We've got... I understand all that, but I want it to be a bit of a holiday as well, so... I'm going to go down there. I'm, I'm down there for five days and I'm going to fish for perch. Now, most people go down there, they fish for barbell, they fish for the chub, they fish for the roach, they fish for, for the pike, definitely. Um, and every time I've gone down there, I've, ne I've never caught a barbell in my life. And I've gone to a fishery where I've witnessed the biggest barbell come out of there and I actually took the photo for it, for Ray Walton. And I've still got the Angler's Mail copy of that as well. And I was the only piker on a fishery that day. It was just me and him. Because it was such a horrible, shitty day. There was no one else on the fishery. And I was down there piking. And it's really strange. Because I really want to go down there and do a bit of barbell fishing. But everything else, other species get in the way. I've even gone down there pike fishing one day. To try and catch live bait. And because I was catching such nice big roach. I forsake the, the, the pike rods. Left them. And I was just sitting there roach bashing all day. I was catching them up to, around the pan market. It was brilliant. Brilliant fun. So I've decided to go a little bit earlier than the pike season. Go down there in September and smash it up for the perch. Now they do have big perch down there and supposedly fire pandas. Now I know of threes and fours. I've seen photos of threes and fours. I've not seen any photos of fire pandas, but they, I've been told reliably that there are um, fire pandas. I talk quite regularly to the owner of Davis Tackle. Uh, and he informs me that there's some big perch and I've asked him about the rules, what I can and can't do down now, if I'm allowed to lure fish, if I'm allowed to lie baits on and so forth. But you'll see all that in the video. So I'm going to go down I'm going to film. Uh, I've got five days of fishing on my own. Come and go as I please and I'm proper looking forward to it. So I'm trying to think in my mind how I'm going to film the actual um, the trip. How am I, go how am I going to pull it together? You know, am I going to do separate little videos, do one big epic video? Um, if I come away with a couple of two pandas, I will be over the moon. But it could be hit and miss. It depends on the time of year if it's really raining. I'm hoping it'll be like it is now, just a little bit cooler. And it'll be perfect for purchasing. So I've got that trip planned. So you can't moan that I'm not going to be coming out with content. Um, obviously the tackle making. I've had to put that back a little bit. Because of me being busy. I did make a perch fishing bob video. Um making bobs and that but the thing is i didn't i didn't like how the video came out so i edited it and everything and i wasn't pleased with it so i'm going to redo it again i'm going to reshoot it again but what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you a couple of couple of what i've been working on at the moment so i've been working on some prototypes so these are some these these are not lacquered at the moment um and these are some pike bums uh, you can see they've got little eyes at the bottom i think they're absolutely beautiful if i do say so myself I wouldn't say they're perfect. They're no, they're no Andrew Fields uh, quality. Uh, they do look ridged and bumped at the moment because they need to be lacquered. I quite like this one. I think that's quite beautiful. Uh, I can put some more whipping on it if I wanted to. Some gold thread. But I'm going to sign them and that. So can you imagine, in the competition, you can choose any colour form or any design you want. And I'll paint them up for you in any style you want. Um, you can imagine that just below the surface bobbing up and down for the pike absolutely immense but to to make your own tackle is fantastic and i'm going to show you i'm going to make videos how to make these guys um so i've also made some perch bobs as well so i made these little ones these are a homage to andrew field 
he likes to use that colour scheme, so I thought I'd give it a go with that colour scheme. Again, none of these are lacquered. Um, similar one to the Pike Bob. You see the Pike Bob? Well, I made the Perch version. Absolutely beautiful. Look at those as a set. Imagine if you wanted that. I, I would I'd make those as a set for you. If you want that colour scheme, I can make that colour scheme. Um, that one with some gold whipping. That's quite a nice Perch Bob. Quite a thin, thin uh, bodied one. Absolutely love that with the gold whipping. Uh, this one is actually a quill, so that's a, a porcupine quill with a, with the uh, the body of a cork. Just trying to get a, a better look at that. Absolutely fantastic. We've got these two as well. These two are the same per pattern colour scheme. Absolutely beautiful. And I've got a red background uh, in my bedroom. So they don't sort of stand out as much. And now I've got my Kingfisher colours. There's something about the Kingfisher colours um, that really, really work. You can imagine that below the surface. Just bobbing away in a weir pool. Fantastic. So I'm very, very made up and very pleased with the progression of my early, my early perch bobbers. You can see I'm obsessed with perch bobbers. I do make other floats. I'm not making them to sell at the moment, but I am... I am considering it. I'm not sure. Um, it's dedicating the time to make them for other people and to sell them on. Maybe in a couple of months down the line, I will set up some sort of funding page or whatever where you can buy them off me uh, or buy them page. Uh, maybe set up an email account or something, an uh, eBay account where you can buy them off me. Um, but what I will say is, is that I'm going to be making the videos how to make these yourselves. If you if you want to make them, then I'm going to show you how to do it on a basic level. Um, nothing complex, nothing complicated. There are you can overcomplicate it, and you can take your time with it and make them look quite nice. But the winner of that competition is going to get, like I say, two per two perch floats, standard ones, two pipe bobs, standard, and one cork. So this is a body that's not painted up yet, but a cork, um, a cork version. Okay, so. So you've got the, the the tackle making. Not only those, I'm going to make bobbers, I'm going to uh, bobbins, I'm going to make uh, pipe drop arm indicators, which I'm in the middle at the moment of making. Um, so I'm going to make all different types of predator tackle, um, and it's going to be a series, maybe five or six videos of how to make. So uh, look out for that one. So that's more videos coming. Um, also fishing fishing trips with my friends with Keith. Me and Keith are going to go to um, our commercial water where we fish for pike and we're going to do a couple of overnighters. So that'll probably come in maybe October. Um, I'm even thinking about back end of next season doing what I'm doing with the royalty and doing four or five days down there on my own. So I don't drive. So what I'll do is probably get one of those long range cabs to take me down there and then pick me back up five days later and just spend solid five days on the bank. Um, maybe before the end of next season, so maybe March, February, late February, early March, where I do four days, five days on this particular water, and maybe move swim a couple of times and see if I can pick up some pike, because um, there's some massive pike in the water. And I think if if I do something like that, it will give me the best chance. I think this is where my PB is going to come from. So I do have other plans. Uh, some more videos, even more videos, in between all what I'm doing, I'm also going to bring back the Pond's Diary. Now, I did plan on doing the Pond's Diary last year, and I'm absolutely gutted that I didn't do it. Um, but because of my ill health and being in hospital, literally I went piking three times early last season, and I caught one pike all season, which as a predator angler is, is wrong, and it hurt. So this 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 coming season i'm gonna i'm gonna be on it trust me and you're gonna see lots of video and lots of content um you'll be sick of me by the end <laughs> end of the pike season come next march so yeah i'm gonna bring back the ponds diary um what i'll do is i don't know if it'll be in a diary format or whatever but you'll see me fishing the ponds quite a bit and i may bring it back in a in a sort of diary form one thing i do want to say there would have been another video on top of the videos that i've just explained and that would have been the bloggers match. Now, I don't know if you guys are aware, but there are YouTube bloggers, and some of them are very highly, highly decorated. So, like I've already talked about, Mark Erdwin, you've got uh, Joe, but nothing but fishing, Carl and Alex, 
um, Chris Fennell of uh, um, the Carp Angler. So he's there's some there's some really big names within the, the blogging industry, and I got invited to go and fish the bloggers match um, at Royston, which is a carp it's, it's a carp fishery basically, and. Um, to be invited was quite a big honour because this year they've done it over the last couple of years and it's dwindled a little bit. They've been enjoyable to watch, but the numbers are dwindled. And I think they wanted to come back with a big bang and bring in fresh blood. And uh, I got very, very kindly, even though I'm in the infancy of my YouTube channel, I got very kindly. They must have seen something in me to ask me. Um, I'm very good friends with Mark. And they said to me, look, do you fancy coming along for the bloggers match? Now, I was all for it and all up for it. But unfortunately, work's got in the way and I'm a casualty of the match. I can't go. I was looking forward to the social aspect of enjoying time, speaking to everybody and getting on with everybody and finally meeting a lot of them in person. Um, I do have plans to meet up with Mark at some point and do some perch and chub fishing with him um, and maybe film it. So I'm hoping that will happen at some time this year, uh, maybe October, November time. So I've got so much content. As you can tell, I've got so much content. But... Just quickly going back, excuse me, I really could do a drink right now. Um, my mouth's dry, just talking constantly for like 25 minutes. I'm going to try and wrap up in a moment. Um, so yeah, just um, just to reiterate, I can't make that match and I'm really, really gutted, trust me. Next year, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure I get there. And I believe Keith's going to be coming with me as well. So hopefully next year, it may be on the river and it may even be a Predator match. I don't know, not everybody fishes for predators but everybody can fish for carp and I think that was their thinking of doing it and it was very kindly donated on, uh, by Nash Lakes um, for, for the guys to do their bloggers match so make sure you watch out for the bloggers match um, which I think starts filming in the next couple of weeks and I'll tell you what I'm going to be watching it with envy eyes because I'm gutted not to go but um, it was really really awesome to be asked to do so anyway Last thing, uh, it's just thanks for everybody's support, really. And um, just before that, actually, I'm going to put up a little video clip now, and then I'll I'll come back and uh, say goodbye. But a little video clip. Um, it's my local river. I was just doing a little bit of filming, so I had a, a hospital appointment yesterday, and uh, went down to my local um, my, my local river, and uh, I'll just do a little video, about a five minute video, just explaining about what I want to do with that video for next year. So I'm going to run that little video now so you can watch it and then um i'll come back and i'll just speak about the last little bit of hello so yes i know i'm not fishing i'm actually by a river outside lewisham hospital now lewisham hospital is where i was admitted at the start of the year with um blood poisoning and uh oh, i can't remember what the actual name of it's called it begins with c um i'm sure it'll come to me but yes i was admitted i was actually up there one of the walls just up there well all different walls I, I was jumping different uh, levels but yeah that's where I was on the walls and this is the River Ravensbottom which is just outside sorry I don't know if you can hear properly but this is just outside my uh, my walls it looks absolutely chubby you know it's a weird pool I didn't even know this existed to be quite fair a lot of people told me about it but I never actually looked for myself so it looks absolutely beautiful. It's like where you'd think a barber would live. Right in the middle of South East London. Now, you've got a little slack water down now with a little inlet coming out. And um, it just looks like it holds fish. Now, I heard on the grapevine it does hold fish. Now, I've heard that there are chub and dace in here and they were stocked in here quite a few years ago. Now, for about the last two or three years, I've been meaning to go around this particular river and this is a stretch of river that runs between the ponds that I fish right up until um, Greenwich in London where it runs into the River Thames it's 11 miles long this river and it's a sewage river um, I know it's a lot cleaner than it used to be um, there's a little bridge there and it runs under the bridge I'll go and have a look at the other side in a moment and it just uh, it's a little bit slacker and and quieter up there and it just looks like if you just turn up here as an angler you would think that there's fish in here and it's uh it's one of those places where like i said i've been told there's fish in here and they stock dace and chub and i heard there's even perch in here now the moral of the story is i wanted to fish it i wanted to fish it on the quiet and i wanted to catch one fish from it just a nice chub if there are if they're here 
Um, look at that slack water over there by that, that the other side of that log. It runs off into another little chibble tree. Um, come down here and catch one or two fish and that would be it. Never return again, never come down here and fish again. Just to say that I caught a chub or a dace on my doorstep that never get fished for. I don't think you are allowed to fish on. There's no signs up saying no fishing. If I was to do it, I'd probably do it early hours of the morning. It's a bit of a dodgy area, this, this Lady World Park. So if I was going to come, it will come on the quiet, on the spare at the moment, come down here for a, maybe with a nine foot quiver rod and just fish a link ledger into the slack water and see if I can pick up with a lobworm or something or a piece of bread and see if I can pick up a chub or a dace or even a roach if they're here. Um, a perch would be fish of dreams, even if it was like half a pound because it would mean so much. This is, this is a river that's been on my doorstep and I used to further upstream at Beckenham Place Park I used to pond dip in there um, I have been sent videos through from friends in the past so I'm just walking over to the other side to have a look at the, the quieter water just to see if there's anything now uh, again I've not seen it I'm seeing this for the first time apart from when I looked at it out my window <laughs> when I was admitted to hospital oh my god look how quiet that is that little slack water by the tree over there and just under my, under my rod tip as I would call it you just expect that there would be a nice, nice tub laying down, especially down there, or just beyond there. Um, that weir pool looked really barbly as well. I know there's definitely no barbel. Now, yeah, going back to the story. Now, two or three years ago, um, a friend of the family, who's pretty much like family, a girl called um, Nicole, she done a little video for me and sent it to me privately on Private Messenger, showing me fish in Lewisham. Now, I'm not sure if it's from here, or further up uh, and they was all milling around in the margins not sure if they were trout or, or chub or big dates it was really hard to tell but what they were they were fish <clears throat> and there was quite a few of them and it was quite bad footage but it was just to prove they, that they were there so fast forward to this year I did plan on coming down here because I'm into my photography as well and there are kingfishers further up in Lewisham breeding kingfishers urban kingfishers which is really really rare you expect them to be along here now we have had a lot of rainfall so this river's up a little more and a bit more coloured than it normally is that when I saw it um, it's a little bit more clearer uh, and a little bit shallower but yeah a little bit further up I was going to uh, photograph some kingfishers and just looking at some birds down there now I think they're I think they're just uh, sparrows but you never know I may see a kingfisher and uh, they were breeding pairs I wanted to photograph them so I've been doing some research on this river for doing that however this year there's an angler on my page I'm not going to say who he is so I don't know if he wants exposure or not who put up that he's fishing every borough in London to try and catch a fish from every borough in London so I'm just going to move back around the other side again and uh, yeah he's fishing every borough in London and uh, trying to catch fish from one. And Lewisham is obviously one of his boroughs. And he put a video up of him, uh, of him fishing or seeing chub in Lewisham further up. Now I know where the stretch is, it's a bit of an undesirable area, but I think towards 5 a.m. on a summer's morning, flying up there and trying to catch them, they're quite high up, so it's very difficult, unless you was to get into the river or use a drop net to actually catch these fish. Now, I don't want to spend hours here trying to catch them, bringing all my gear down. Maybe a little, a little sort of bum bag, so to speak, with uh, with a net, a camera, and uh, a small quiver rod, like a, a, a nine foot feeder rod, and try and catch one of these fish. And it would be just for me. It's going to be a very personal thing to do. I don't want to do it to come here and catch loads of fish. It's just such a personal thing that I've always wanted to catch since I caught sticklebacks and small minnows further up in Beckenham Place Park, like I said. So, just going to give you one last look at the river, and that's a little bit of a story. A um, bit further up in towards Sydenham, there's also a place where they, they actually stock fish, which is a bit further up upstream, past Catford, up into Sydenham, which is a, a side river that parts off from this main river. But it just looks, just look at it. One last look. You've got this little slack down here, that feeds off from the weir. You've got dripples of water coming through. 
you've got a slack over the back there, it just screams barbel and chub. I mean, not right in the middle of the water, but definitely barbel. I mean, I can see a big snag there in the water, a big tree. But when I was up in that, that hospital ward, I was looking, all I could do was dream about fishing when I was stuck in hospital for four weeks. And uh, this is the place that I was just looking out the window. Every, I was very lucky to get a window bed. I was forever sitting there just dreaming about the fish that are in this river. And like I say, for very personal reasons, nothing, it's not anything to be proud of or go, you know, I caught a, a, a six ounce chub or whatever. It's just something that I've, I've always wanted to do since I was a kid, to catch a fish from my local river. Where I live in South East London, you just don't get many places to fish. And the places you do are either got fucking, excuse my language, knobheads, um, pissheads, druggies and that kind of thing, hoodies and God knows what. And this place is no different. It's nice at the moment because it's working hours. But yeah, I've just been for a hospital appointment and I thought I'd just come down and take a look. So I thought I'd give you guys a look as well. You know, it's going to happen. I will do it. Probably not this year, but it will happen maybe next year. Um, really start planning it trying to find the best place, trying to find the fish. Um, that's another thing, got to find them. Maybe come down here on the quiet, like I say. Just put a little quiver rod out for a, even an hour. If I don't get nothing, I don't get nothing. At least I say I could tr I've tried. But it'd be really, really nice to catch one. But I can imagine the kingfishers live along here as well. If I can find the kingfishers, then I know there's definitely fish around the area. So, we'll see, we'll see. This time next year, hopefully I'll be holding a, a chub, perch or a dace from my local river and also some really nice shots of kingfishers thanks for watching guys so i hope you enjoyed that little 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 snippet of video that i've done um explains a little bit about what i want to do next year um and uh it's it's quite important that i do it it's something i can't get out of my head and i can't wait to go and try and catch a fish on my local river which doesn't hold many fish at all um, but we'll see what happens that's one for next year so keep an eye out for that um, and like I say the last thing is thank you so much for subscribing um, a thousand subscribers now really really chuffed over the moon look out for all the future content and all the future videos it's a little bit of an update for me make sure you subscribe to my Facebook page if you subscribe to my Facebook page you'll get all the updates of everything I spoke about bit by bit I'm always posting up there constantly um, I've got quite. I've actually got more followers on Facebook than I have on uh, the YouTube at the moment. So I've got to try and make sure I even it out a little bit. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and and share the hell out of my fishing page. Trust me, there is a lot of content coming, and I've got lots of plans, as you can tell. And um, make sure on this particular channel you hit that bell notification because if you hit that bell notification and because a lot of people are not getting their videos being notified to let you know when my new videos go up or anybody on YouTube. So make sure you hit that little bell in the corner and what that will do is it will just give you a little notification to say Barry's uploaded a video um, or the London Predators anglers uploaded the video. So just want to say a massive thank you to Keith for being my fishing buddy lately and uh, coming doing lots of Predator trips with me. Also Dan, I've not seen Dan for a long time. He will be um, he'll be coming out at some point, I'd imagine, in the next six months of me. Uh, and also Jack, which I plan to do some fishing trips with you very soon, buddy. So I need to sort out some trips with you over the docks and up the Thames. Um, so yes, keep out some, some videos. There are going to be videos coming up that I've not even mentioned. And that's, like I say, fishing with Jack over the Thames and that kind of thing. But um, other than that, I just want to say a massive thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and leave as many comments as you want and share the shit out of these videos. So, tight line and dead baits. Enjoy your weekend, enjoy your day or enjoy your fishing or whatever you're doing. And I'll catch you real soon, guys. Take care. Bye.